What's up, guys? So before we get into today's episode, you're probably, some of you are probably asking yourself, where the hell have the episodes been this past month? Well, life happened to me, guys. Um, and if I'm out of work and I have to take time off, um, it, the whole podcast doesn't run because I'm the one who does the interviews. I'm the one who does the, most of the editing, all of the creative work. It's, it's my project and I do most of it. Shout out to Johnny. He's our sound engineer. He does a beautiful job making my voice sound excellent. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up and a little update of where I've been. Um, I got my wisdom teeth pulled uh, about a month ago and I was at my parents' house because my dentist is um, close to where my parents live. So I just stayed at their house for the recovery. While I was there, at, towards the end of my recovery, uh, my stepdad actually brought home COVID. Um, so I had to stay there an extra week. And then I came home for a week. Uh, I was only home for a week. And then very last minute, I found out that I was actually, I actually had the opportunity to go to Lost Lands. Um, so then I was gone at, at a work opportunity. So I had to go to Lost Land. I was in Legend, Legend Valley for about a week. Um, and yeah, it's just life happened. <laughs> My wisdom teeth, then unexpected COVID, and then uh, Lost Lands was after that. So just, I'm sorry that we've had a lack of, uh, you know, episodes being released this month. We have a bunch in the tank, a bunch planned. We are going to be back on schedule and back on everything. Um, I appreciate you guys for understanding. Um, and, you know, we've been consistent for the last three years. This is the first time this has really ever happened to me. And, you know, it, it's to be expected. Life happens sometimes. And it's okay if you've got to take some time off work. And I, I just, I thank you guys so much for sticking with us. And I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. Shank Aaron, welcome to the Underground Society podcast, man. Thanks for having me. I found something very cool that you did in like the Denver community. It was the house tours. At some point during work, we thought it'd be funny to recreate MTV Cribs, but only in Colorado with EDM people. And then all of a sudden, before I know it, you find yourself in Taboo's basement. And you're like, oh, right. how did this get to you? <laughs> I just did a leg of a tour with uh, Dirt Monkey and Jansen, and Patrick brought his five-year-old son with him. That literally took all of the like glamour and just brought it right back down to mm -hmm. being a traveling parent, which is not glamorous at all. No. <laughs> Their hands are always sticky, 24 hours a day. Like they just came out of the shower, it doesn't even matter. They're, for some reason, their hands are just the consistency of like a Jolly Rancher. Don't talk about it if you can't, but you mentioned a summer that you said you could never speak about again. And since, since you brought it up, can you let us in on that secret? I've been advised by uh, lawyers and legal counsel that both of us are never supposed to talk about that. But just so you know, I remember. Fuck. <laughs> Shank Aaron, welcome to the Underground Society podcast, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing Absolutely. good, man. How are you doing? Good. Been uh, just prepping for Lost Lands. I found out yesterday that I'm that I'm actually going to be able to go. I, I got a work opportunity, so I get to go to Lost Lands this year, last minute. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you know? Uh, are you going to be going for all the days, or? Yeah, I'll be there. I'm leaving Monday, so I'm work starts Tuesday. I'm helping set up camp. So Tuesday to Thursday, I'll be working, and then oh, I get so you'll the, be there, like, the, week. the whole time. Yeah, so I'll be there Monday to the following Tuesday. So I'll be over there for over a week. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, we'll have to meet up and meet in person. Definitely. Yeah, I know you're you're Thursday. playing. Is this your first Lost Lines you're playing? Yep. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, I'm very excited and nervous, but mostly yeah. excited. <laughs> Uh, how's the so, uh, prep going for it? You're set, ready to go? Yeah, like I just had a track with Django that I was working on today that we're trying to finish up basically specifically for that. And yeah, I feel like everyone's in full Lost Lands prep right now. It's yeah, pretty, pretty for crazy sure. to see an entire genre of music kind of like shutting down for a week. And well, Lost Lands <laughs> is like know, the Super Bowl almost. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty wild. I went there for a couple of years ago just to check it out for a day and i was totally I, I did not anticipate the scale of everything now i actually get to go there and experience it as an artist so oh yeah that's sick you're coming from actually talking about the people going and you know everyone kind of getting their stuff together i think you might be in feeling this more than anyone because you live in like the base capital of america or the world some may argue but i know you're from new york originally what really caused you to move out to Colorado? Was it mainly music that brought you out there? No, no. When I, when I moved out here, first of all, well, first of all, it was an accident, but like 
Colorado didn't really have that crazy of a music scene. Yeah, not until like here. the last like five years and last few years, everyone's been moving there. <laughs> yeah, which makes sense because like right now it's definitely popping off. But no, I was just on a road trip with some friends and they wanted to, uh, one of them was moving to Boulder. And so we all came to vacation here and like just fell in love with uh, the area of Boulder. Just because like if you're familiar with upstate New York, at all um the the weather is probably the worst in the country i would say (laughs) so yeah coming out and seeing the sun for the first time was pretty mind-blowing and i was like pretty hooked on it so i stayed out here and hung out but then as i was here the music scene just kind of started exploding and um you know it was new enough that a lot of me and my friends, like my really close friend, uh, Patrick, who's a uh, dirt monkey, we were able to kind of carve out our own niche when it Is was he, kind of... He had been in Colorado for a long time, huh? Like before you moved there, right around when you moved there. He's been there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's not there anymore, though. He just moved to oh, Florida okay. uh, like a year ago. But the whole, basically the whole rest of the time, he was, we li- either lived on the same street or down the street from each other and all that. So yeah, when it first started out no one was really doing anything in boulder everyone was in denver but we lived there so we just had our own night we would invite all our friends out yeah kind of kind of got to carve out our own little things while yeah as parallel to the denver scene so it was pretty fun yeah i was gonna i was gonna say because i know not only dirt monkey but even just you know doing my research and digging back into you know your instagrams and stuff you've been friends with like some like Gondra White Knight and Subcarbon Boys, like for a long time. Did that relationship kind of with you know that label and that team kind of start with Dirt Monkey? Because I know he's been ar- around those guys for a while. No, actually, I would say so. Like Gondra White Knight's management, which I feel like it's not like a secret, but like they're the Infrasound people as well. It's like the same team. So a long time ago, when they were doing the Infrasound Festival in uh like black river falls and stuff like that i went out and played a few years and i met them all through that and then okay it wasn't until later i was back in denver and i had like fallen in love with ganja white knight from that because they they had such a unique sound that i specifically really liked and i knew patrick would like too so they were playing in cervantes in denver and you know, I called up Patrick and I was like, dude, this is the group I've been telling you about. You got to see them. They do music really similar to you. Like you guys need to meet. And so we went out to that show and he was like, Oh my God, this is so fun. And <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, that's how, that's how we all kind of like linked up. But I totally give credit to like Toffler and uh, the Infrasound team for uh, bringing us all together originally. That's awesome. Probably early stages of sub carbon. All those guys went on to, do huge massive things what was it like being like around those guys like and like being buddies with those guys during the rise of that it was really cool because i don't think that they had like they were pretty focused on what they were doing but i don't think that they ever saw the scale or at least led on to it like they just wanted to stay in their lane and do it like i think that they would have continued to do what they were doing even if they never got really big which is a cool quality for for artists to have but i think because the infrasound people believed in them so much and uh you know that relationship really put them in front of the right people so that they could grow their fan base but like they're like the most humble nicest people ever ben and Irwin are like two of my favorite guys in the scene i know they i feel like they come across as really nice in real life too to like their fans but like that's really how they are too. Yeah. So. So, yeah. And they they have, uh, where are they from originally? I know they have accents. They're Belgium. Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I think, yeah. I think they, I think they speak French though. Cause isn't that what Belgium I'm pretty people sure. speak? Yeah. I'm like the least cultured person. I've like never been out of the country <laughs> or like, I don't know shit about like, Belgium <laughs> other than I play, I played water polo in high school and I know Belgium teams like one of the best in the world. That's about all I know about them though. <laughs> uh, anytime I like, learn about something it's like mind blowing to me from europe or anything like that <laughs> yeah i've never seen any of it but yeah i remember i remember them telling me that's like they don't speak belgium they speak a different language that's yeah, what yeah. they speak there what then but, got you into like the production and like performance side of things for yourself like what you're hanging around those guys and stuff were you already making music when you first met them or 
Well, with Patrick, uh, Dirt Monkey, we started our own dubstep night in Boulder, and I didn't really have any plans for production, but like I was really, really into DJing, like as its own craft. So I did that for like a really, really long time, and the whole time Patrick would be making songs and showing me, and it'd be like, you know, this awesome stuff, and I kept on watching, being like, ah, I'll just stick to the DJing thing or whatever. Until eventually I pretty much couldn't because it was just like, all right, I got to like, I hear songs and I'm like, oh, that's cool, but I would do it a different way. And then, you know, someone would be like, just do it. Start so get the finally, itch. Yeah. Yeah. I started to get the itch. But at that point, which I think is a little unique for people, is I had already had a pretty good local following for just my DJ project. So when I first started making music, I was playing my terrible, terrible garbage first tries at making dubstep in front of like big crowds at Beta or or at our night in Boulder or wherever we were playing at, which I think is is a little backwards from how you're probably supposed to do it. The name is Shank Aaron. What when did you mm-hmm. you I know your 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 actual name's not even Aaron, is it? No, it's Tom. <laughs> what does that mean? That, that and throws like, people that, off a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Because you told me your your actual name once I reached out to you and everything, and I was like, wait, his name's not Aaron, what? (laughs) Yeah, that definitely throws people off quite a bit. I don't know, I was trying to like... So, there's a place called uh, the Fox Theater in Boulder. And so when me and Patrick first started performing together, uh, this is like a deep cut, no one's going to know this, but uh, we were originally called Pillow Fight. That was our Uh, name. But because of proximity clauses and stuff, uh, we weren't able to play as many shows as we wanted to because they didn't want us to play like the same thing in the same week. So we came up with other names on the side so that we could like perform as ourselves or like as the group name and play twice as many shows, basically. And Patrick had already kind of gone as Dirt Monkey for a while before that, but I kind of had to scramble to find a name. And I never in a million years thought that I would actually have to stick with it. I thought it would just be like a temporary, like, you know, kind of joke thing. So I was just kind of, I was watching TV and there was a commercial and the commercial, I forget, I think it was like a car dealership or something like that, but it was talking about Hank Aaron, the baseball player. And so I thought that that was close enough to Shank Aaron, which would be funny. And... (laughs) And like my uh, my only real like criteria for it was I just like Googled it to see if there was anyone using yeah, that make sure name it's not taken. or like right. anything similar. And like when I like searched for it, like didn't come up with anything. And I was like, oh, well, at least I'll have that kind of like all to myself. And so that kind of worked out in my favor this whole time because there hasn't really been any other names that are similar enough. So when you like search for me, you usually just get my stuff. Nice. But yeah, I spent like no time creatively thinking of a name because I never thought it was going to be something I'd actually have to be like stuck with for a long time. Yeah. Well, how, did, was there ever a thought of like rebranding or anything or turning into something else? Oh yeah. I've had so many like better name like thoughts over the years. And so I've kind of helped out a few of my friends and I just give them to them uh, to, okay. to use when they're starting <laughs> up. But like, I swear I'm like the best at coming up with names for other people. Just, not for myself and also like (laughs) at this point like it kind of does have like a soft spot for me just because i've been doing it for so long i almost can't think of changing that because especially with like you have label releases now you have like it's a it's like you have to like really go through the rebrand instead of just like okay now i'm calling myself something else yeah (laughs) but one thing i'll say though is like the negative side of that is i have like my oldest releases that are under this name are so terrible and they (laughs) never will go away like they're still on spotify you can't have them taken down and so like i'll talk to kids like who are like you know just getting into shit and like they're way younger and they're like oh i just wrote my first song like how do i get this released and i'm like yo don't like save it in another year you're gonna be like pissed that you put it out because then it's just gonna be up on the internet forever haunting you laughing at you go by like a different name or something or just kind of like don't care or put that much thought into a name and then just kind of release it and like get used to the practice of everything. And then like, okay, I know what I'm doing now. Let's launch a bigger project that actually is cohesive and means something. So 
Either way, exactly. I guess you could go. Yeah. <laughs> but but I think that people are in a race to like get to where they're trying to go really quickly. So they just start putting stuff out. And then if you do that, you end up like me with your your most popular songs on Spotify being like eight year old yeah. <laughs> like first tries at music and stuff. Dude, so, the, the, for the yeah, longest time. I kind time of regret I... that, but I don't regret the name. I like I like the name and I'm I'm sticking with it. For the longest time, I, I I relate with this very much so because like my first episode of the podcast was horrible. I didn't mix or master anything. Like sounded like shit. Like, and it's still at the bottom of our feed. And for a while, it was like one of our top tracks. So on like SoundCloud and like other like YouTube and stuff, it would be always pushed to the top. I'm like, no, I don't want people to watch this. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> so I can definitely relate with that. <laughs> yeah, I have a song. The first release that I ever <clears throat> like put out is uh it was a collab with dirt monkey and it came out on play me records which is like reed speeds label from a long time ago and uh it, i don't even think it was that long ago maybe like a couple of years ago i because like we're still friends and i just like reached out to her and i was like hey is there like any secret way we can have this track taken down because it's like super embarrassing and like people will still listen to it quite a bit because it's with dirt monkey and she goes no you just gotta own your mistakes and i was like Aww, <laughs> damn it <laughs> So it's just going to be up there forever, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's also the other way you can look at that, too, is from a fan perspective. It's like it's cool. Like, I don't remember how long ago this was, but I, I'm a huge fan of Subtronics. Um, and I went back and listened to like some early stuff that he had, like his uh, first stuff that he released on Spotify. And it's like old rhythm stuff. Like it doesn't sound anything like he does now. And it's just cool to like, I guess, listen through the catalog and see how much he's progressed as an artist. So like, that's another way of looking at it too, is like, at least people are seeing your progress and you're like, you know what I mean? See where you are now. Yeah. But, but that only works if you're like Subtronics and you're that's great true, I guess. now. So that you yeah. Can, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, no one wants to see someone who's like, you know, like, so so and then they like you're like oh i see them when they're even worse than they were now if you're in subtronics you're like oh i want to see him learning how to make music because it's interesting to me because you know what he later becomes right right if it's uh if it's like a newer artist or something like that you're like i only want to hear your like first tries at rhythm that's that's fair that's fair <laughs> <laughs> but um, i totally get that because i've listened to i've listened to a bunch of those old subtronics tunes too because i think they like posted them online like kids will find them and shit like that and listen to it and i'm like ah i remember when days, we were all right? sounding like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wanted to go back to you you know living in denver and creating kind of your own community there i i found something very cool that you did in like the denver community with all the djs and stuff was the house tours that you did the uh, oh um uh, the the I don't know how you've it's been a while since you've done one, but uh, you did one with Taboo uh like four months mm-hmm. ago or something like that. And I, I just wanted to know a little bit about that. Is that your channel or are you a part of is there like a group that you're a part of or like what so, is that? And I, it was super entertaining. So I think you guys did a great job. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's a, it's actually like we do them in clumps just based on like artist availability basically, but we're actually about to go in and start recording a bunch of new episodes after Lost Lands. So, but yeah, what happened was I'm pretty fortunate. Me and a a friend of mine uh, who I met through my day job, which is this uh, Colorado like art and humor magazine called the rooster. He's big into EDM. We kind of like bonded through that and so he helps me with a lot of projects because he's really good at like video stuff and editing and, and things of that nature. And so at some point during work, we had talked about, you know, extra is in this like kind of was born out of when like shows were kind of still coming back and we had a lot of free time after the pandemic. And we thought it'd be funny to recreate MTV Cribs, but only in Colorado and with EDM people. But then my boss overheard us talking about that and he decided that that was like realistically a good idea, which was surprising to me. <laughs> and so he, so he allowed us like, you know, cause we do a lot of projects and video content at work anyway. So he was like, why don't you guys try it out? See like, you know, how long it would take to film, how many people would be interested. Cause his whole thing was like, I don't think you guys are going to be able to get that many people who will let you tour their house. And I was like, I'm not worried about that. I'm more just worried about having the free time to do it. And he's like, I'll give you the free time at work to do it. If you can 
sign people up for it. And so we started signing up a lot of like started with like the people who I kind of like are pretty close friends with and have usually been over to their houses in person anyway. And then we've kind of branched out from there. And like, I know a lot of the new ones that we're scheduling right now are people I've like either never even met before or, you know, only maybe met a few That's times. That's super cool. Here and anyway. Yeah. Is, is it a pretty big, like you said, it's a, like a newspaper or a, a magazine in Colorado? It's a, it's a magazine and then like, you know, some social channels and stuff, but it's is kind it of a pretty, like this Is it weird... pretty popular in the Denver area or is it more of like a startup type company? Well, it's been around for a long time. I've only been working there for probably the last, like, I think three or four years, but I think it's been around for a lot longer than that. I know the circulation is 60,000 a month. So yeah, it's crazy. Cause like, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but then sometimes I talk to people and they're like, Oh my God, it's my, fa- my favorite yeah. magazine. I've been reading it for <laughs> years and all that, because it is like, we don't take ourselves very seriously. Like it's a, it's a well-produced magazine, but like the articles will be like humorous and like Goofy, fun, irreverent. fun topics. Yeah. yeah. And then we just That's mix dope. that up with really dope art. So it's a, I don't know. I really like it. That's cool. Uh, what, other than, other than the show, what do you, do for them on like a day-to-day basis i <laughs> i am the the head of meme development essentially nice. <laughs> so yeah i'm basically just a content creator i i make i come up with ideas for video content i do some of my own i come up with all their their social content so like which is essentially like memes and colorado it's all very colorado based so it's like you know colorado humor or things that are happening or you know a lot of Casa Benita jokes, basically. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, with it being in Denver, like the, what a great place for just those two worlds that kind of, you know, your show to be born out of those two kind of worlds coming together of the love for EDM and then like the magazine that's been around for, like you said, a while. That's so cool that you were able to put that together and a great place for it to, you know, be able to get DJs on and feature specific DJs because there's so many of them that live in Denver. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, we haven't even like scratched the surface yet of like really getting into it. Um, just know, Millennium, Nick, I'm coming for you, buddy. Damn, I'm I hope he watches house. this. If he watches this, um, I love you, Nick. <laughs> you, I love your music, you man. You never know. <laughs> I, I'm always surprised because like Nick is such a homie. Like he's such a real person. But like I always like see him like watching my stories and stuff on Instagram. And I'm always like, Interesting. Don't you have yeah. better things to do with your time? <laughs> yeah, right. but, I'm You're like, but I've like known those guys. I've known those guys for a long time. So oh, like, yeah, I was gonna say because Delenium's also Delenium's also a Denver guy. So that's another. Yeah, yep. he's another. Him he's and this guy. They used to be roommates. That's why I was like, they don't live together anymore, obviously. But if I could have gotten the that would have been the ultimate house party episode. Is yeah, right. <laughs> said this guy. <laughs> it's like it's like but, I, I don't know if you if, are a big being a content creator. Maybe you are big like big creator LA, like, like Logan Paul, Jake Paul uh, back in the, they're, they're, I mean, they're still ultra famous now, but back in their like more college days, their team 10 house, <laughs> it's almost like s- similar idea for the Illenium house, <laughs> but for EDM. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> well, it's crazy too. Cause like we've just kind of reached the point in that where it's not so much me reaching out to people. Now we have like people reaching out to us to do episodes. Um, so that's going to be really cool. But yeah, just uh, we got a pretty full schedule coming up of filming, but everyone is real busy. Like basically summer is like off because of festival mm-hmm. season. Right. So Hell of people are busy, we kind of yeah. took a, yeah, we took a hiatus to do that. But now that we're kind of getting the end, we're starting to put together, everyone's getting buzzed for it. And we're, we're getting the cameras fired up and ready to go to do like, I think four more episodes coming up soon. Sweet. Yeah, it's it. I will... I'm a fan of the show, so I will be watching. And Thanks. Millennium House I'm would glad because I, I never know that. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder, like, because I see the numbers, and I was like, sometimes those episodes pop off pretty hard, but I'm always wondering, like, who are the people that are watching this? But, yeah, I, I'm also just blown away that, like, my dumb stoner ideas, like, come to <laughs> fruition through these types of things. Because, like, I'll say things as a joke, and then all of a sudden – before I know it, Actually it's like happening. we're scheduling yeah. like, video <laughs> shoots and stuff. I'm like, okay. Manifestation, bro. All of a sudden you're going, <laughs> yeah, it's like you start making jokes and then all of a sudden you find yourself in Taboo's basement and you're like, oh, right. how did this get to you? <laughs> with clay, with so. clay penises. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I walked into that house and I was like, 
because normally I walk in, I'm like, how do we make this into like an episode? Because it's usually like people's just normal houses, and that's what I expected. But you go into that house, and I was like, I was like, how are we going to cut this down to time? <laughs> it was like, because like we could do like a a 45 minute episode in that house and just let him like riff the whole time. Like he's just it's it's crazy because like ass dude, <laughs> I've always, he's super funny, but like like almost effortlessly. So mm-hmm. like, it's not like you stand around him and he like busts some jokes here and there and whatever. Like he's just riffs like yep. as his personality 24 <laughs> seven. We're like, by the end of it, you're like, dude, how, like how is this going <laughs> it's how I, It's just wired differently. <laughs> Yeah, like like if you go back and watch that taboo episode, like I feel like there were some golden moments in there, and not one of those was like rehearsed or redone or anything. Those were all first takes, just totally That's like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like nothing was written or anything like that. He's just really that funny. And Dude, and he's like that being a podcast host, and you know him being a podcast host, he's like for especially because like the the way he does it, it's not as like educational, but it's just like a good time and him joking around. It's him being his he's a perfect person for that role and, and a pers- his stage presence is wild too. So yeah, big fan of taboo. <laughs> well, that's like one of the things that was like weird about this right here is I was like going into it. I actually realized when I was, when I okayed doing this podcast, I was like, wait a minute, I, I've never been on this side of things ever. Like yeah. <laughs> where someone's asking me questions. I'm usually the one like going through someone's house or like whatever. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know what kind of questions you ask. I don't know if I'm that interesting. Like I'm used to being the one asking all the questions. So this is a this is a first time for me. So I, I'm honored oh, that you that you you're, reached you're out. crushing it. So um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I definitely. I mean, I've just seen your name around for a long time, even back you know a few years ago, and you released gosh that uh, subcarbon volume something you released. A- track on there i'm pretty mm. sure that's maybe the first time that i saw your name but ever since then i've seen you you know run around the, the ganja boys and you know wooly and all those guys and i've seen your name pop up a bunch i was like i should reach out to him he seems like a cool guy and then doing my research i was like <laughs> oh this is dope he has a show he has like he's a content creator he's like he gets it so it's cool having you on <laughs> yeah well i appreciate that thank you yeah i wanted to ask you uh you know being around it for one it, you are just a creative person. How did that, you know, between the show and between you writing music and being involved with, you know, the music industry and stuff, when did that, when did you first kind of realize that you wanted to go into creative field for your career? I mean, I feel like I never had a choice. I'm like okay. really bad at literally everything else, even just like okay. working jobs. I'm like the worst. And so when I was a kid, I was always like that too. Like, the only things I did well in were like music and like band and like, I don't know, orchestra and stuff like that. But the big difference is, is like, you know, when I was doing those things, everyone was like, well, you're screwed. Cause those aren't real jobs. And so like, I always was like really bummed about it. Cause I just, but I kept doing it. Cause it was the only thing that really like made me happy. But I always just tried to like force myself into other, you know, work positions and, and things like that until the music industry started kind of becoming more like what it is now where like all of a sudden you can have not even just as a musician but like real jobs like you know either promoting or making flyers or making videos or i mean there's millions of jobs in there but they're like legit like you can do that as your full-time job now and everyone when i was in school fucking lied to me and told me that it wasn't a thing <laughs> so <laughs> i'm pretty lucky that it worked out this way but yeah, when I was a kid, I like I did everything. I was like in like musicals and like I played in like all the different bands and orchestras and yeah, I was always I love music from a young age. Yeah. Your your parents obviously are pretty supportive of you going that route. Uh yes and no. They've always been supportive of doing music, but they haven't been super supportive of focusing on it and like taking it seriously as like a job but that's because their entire lives they never really saw how that would work out because i don't think that like in their entire like when they were kids or when they were growing up like unless you were like elvis like you know like ultra famous yeah. you're like either yeah you're the elvis or you're like a homeless person there was like no <laughs> in between so like things obviously have changed quite a bit and they're obviously a lot more receptive now (laughs) that they've like seen things. Um, 
obviously like my brother is like extremely successful. And so that really, Wait, who is your brother? Um, Wooly. Oh, your brother is Wooly. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, so, I've seen like, you like yeah. play the shows and shit, but I, I did not know that part. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah. You don't, you don't see the, the news. It's like, it's right there. I mean, you just, <laughs> uh, you, you just look Italian to me. <laughs> yeah. It is funny though. When we'll be like, sometimes people will be like really oblivious to that. We'll be like in a green room at a show that we're both playing and someone will be like, you guys look kind of similar. We're like, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah. And my brother is absolutely crushing it. And so that's really shut up my parents pretty hard as far as the uh, music is not a job. Cause now not only is it a job, it's like the best job. So yeah, but I can't really blame like older people for not understanding. Cause like during their life, it was never an option. Like we were really fortunate to be at the time we are in history. Cause like if we were 40 years older, like this would have never been an option. You would have literally like, you know, unless you're the best guitar player in the world, no one would have ever heard of you. And like, there'd be no internet for anyone to hear you. You'd just be like playing in a coffee shop or something. <laughs> and maybe one day, eventually an agent walks in and might hear your music, but yeah, it's landscapes way different now. Thank God to the internet. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I feel like if you were like in the sixties, you had like a one in, you know, 3 million chance of being like found and like, get to record an album or something like that. If you live in Denver, you basically have like a one in 10 chance of being a rhythm DJ. So like the odds are in your favor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man. So, well, now that I just learned that that's kind of something I want to ask you on now, what, what is it like with your brother, you know, having your brother have so much success and, you know, how family dynamic and stuff with that, like your parents see him, like, like you said, like the best job. And then like, you're not quite to that level yet, but like, how, Wow, what was that dynamic like? What has that been like for you, having your brother like be woolly, basically? <laughs> well, it's it's mostly all good, honestly. From him, it's one hundred percent good because like me and him get along super well. He's like one of my best friends. Like he's just a great person, and he includes me in a lot of really fun extra curricular activities that like he gets to be a part of. So that's really cool. And he's very supportive of my stuff. So that part's all awesome. The only probably negative parts are like just random people online or like, you know, or just people confusing me for him a lot just because we do kind of look similar, you know, that never happened when he was still kind of on the come up. But like now that he's doing extremely, extremely well, I feel like people especially at a dubstep thing, we'll just come up and be like, Hey, are you woolly? And I'm like, nah, no. <laughs> and like, oh, okay. And they just, then they just walk away and I'm like, okay. So cool, how many times do you think you're going to get that at lost lands coming up? <laughs> so the only time I was there last time I was hanging out with Adam most of the time. So like that usually clears that up pretty well, but uh, we're, I feel like we look, I don't know. I don't think we look that much alike, but we're definitely Dude. related. Well, but, especially uh, with the longer you have, I'm especially taller, you having the longer hair. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you got the height advantage <laughs> and the hair advantage. Uh, that's what I think. What mainly threw me off. If your hair was shorter, I feel like I might have been like, "Wait, he looks like kind of like Wooly," and I would have asked you about it. So that's probably oh, yeah. what threw me It'll, off. To be honest, <laughs> it's it's. I've been on a, a hair strike for the last year, but after last lands, I'm cutting it. So then oh, I'm shit. probably deal with that again but yeah i didn't cut my hair for a year out of spite because yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I felt like it was a waste of time and money for a little bit but now it's really annoying I don't or you be like me where you're growing out the top I, i've been growing out the top and i keep <laughs> the size short it's yeah i still pay for haircuts mm. but it's growing it out at the same time it's weird <laughs> no I've, I've i've actually like i've taken a firm stand like no one has cut this hair in over 12 months and uh i have not spent a, a single dollar on it but I've uh I've reached the limits of how fun it is and now I'm I'm pretty over it so I'm probably just going to You either chop fall in love with, you either fall in love with your long hair like I, I love having long hair actually better than short hair and it's the first time I've ever I've ever had it long or you're like you grow it out and you're like I right, this ain't it <laughs> I got to cut this shit off <laughs> Well I feel like uh I did it as like cuz I'd never had longer hair before so I wanted to just see what it would look like and it's much I didn't know it was curly so like 
because my hair's always been really short. And so I started doing it and now I realize it's like very poofy and curly and I kind of yeah. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you but, planning on doing with it once, once Lost Line's over? I have to go to the haircut guy who used to cut my hair because he is mad at me because he thought that oh, I was no. cheating on him. <laughs> like, I actually, no, I just haven't had my yeah, haircut. <laughs> yeah, no, actually. So I saw him because he's an EDM person. So he cuts a lot of like DJ's hairs and he, he just didn't hear from me for a whole year. And then I saw him at a show and he goes, oh, oh, you look terrible. Okay. I thought <laughs> you were going to somebody else. And he's like, this makes me feel way better. And so, yeah, I have I have to reconcile with him and like, you know, smooth things over and then I'll just, I'll let him do whatever he wants. Cause he knows. He there knows you what go. To do. Oh, like, Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But that'll, that'll be the big, if you see any at Lost Lands, you'll know. Just, yes. Just for next week. Long hair, That's for- <laughs> shame, short hair. Woolly. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to get into, I always like, you know, and the, the premise of the show is finding out artists struggles and kind of how they've overcome them and, you know, we've talked about all different things of what Bro, you've done, what you've got you. in your career. What has been your main challenge throughout this, you know, throughout your career and throughout this time of you being an artist? I mean, every day is a struggle. I, I feel like I, this whole game is a, it's a mental game, like <laughs> comparing the comparisons and just, you know, the long hours. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. So I feel that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I guess I'm just used to a lot of it too, because like, I'm fortunate enough to like, so me and me and Patrick, we have like a ton of stories about like when we were first starting out and how absolutely chaotic that world was where like almost all the shows that we would be like booked for, like we were pretty positive. None of them were actually going to pay us. Most of them were just like drug dealers trying to like do something legitimate. So we're like, pretty sure like that wasn't going to work out so we've just been like put in these crazy situations for years where now even if there's like little hiccups on the road or like transportation like, issues oh, we've dealt or with whatever this. yeah oh it's like nothing compared to the crazy <laughs> shit that we've had to, to do um but like i throughout all that i kind of all still love that like none of it was ever enough to really deter me from wanting to like do music and play music for people just because like I, even on the worst day of it, it's still the most fun thing ever. Like even if I have to go play a room in the middle of nowhere for seven people, that's way better than going to work. You know, that's why I actually, <clears throat> and, and you can quote me on this. I have this, this thing and I told Mr. Bill about it and he talked about it on his podcast too. Um, but I feel like he didn't really go into it in depth enough like we had actually discussed. I have wanted to put into place a DJ punishment system where it's like an AI system that scours social media. And if it catches you complaining about the same thing three times in under one month, <laughs> you have to go work at Taco Bell for a week. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah. snap a lot and of people then, back into shape. Yes, I would agree. <laughs> Yeah. And on on that seventh day, like people are going to be like, I can't wait to like sit in an airport again (laughs) after working the drive through just to keep people humble, you know, because I feel like sometimes some of the complaints I see, especially on Twitter from big artists who I won't name, uh, they seem pretty like just normal stuff that everyone deals with. And I think that they forget that the alternative to playing music for people every day is making cheesy Gordy to crunches at fucking two thirty in the morning for a bunch of drunk people. So, big facts. I agree. I'm hoping this catches on. The more the more people I tell about this, the more it's going to become a thing. You'll see. Well, now, well, now it's on two podcasts at least. So uh, hopefully, people will be listening to this. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely agree because a lot of people. I mean, especially if you know you wanted to do this from a young age, like a lot of people. Either you know, I even look at guys like um, uh, amorphic, like. I don't even know if that guy's ever had like an actual job. He just produced music. And then, you know, at a, at the age that he would have started a normal career, he was in the music industry touring. So it, like people like that, it's like that you're exactly right. They, their backup plan is they don't have anything else other than music. A lot of times, what do you think causes people to forget about that and like, forget like, Oh, this is what I would have to go back to. <laughs> I think that like, like what you just said, if you've never had that, it's obviously going to be real easy to forget that that's like how like the majority of the population does live. So if you've never had a regular shitty job, 
you probably don't think about as much. And then also just the longer you deal with it. Like I definitely think that, you know, just like anything, you kind of become numb to the craziness of stuff. But I think that that's why it's fun to like bring fun people like to shows or on tours or like, like for instance, I just did a leg of a tour with uh, Dirt Monkey and Jansen. And it was one of the most real life traveling experiences ever because Patrick brought his five-year-old son with him. Oh, um, nice. For like four That's an experience. Of the days. That kid will yes. never forget that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and neither will I because yeah. like that literally, that literally took all of the like, like glamour of being a touring musician and just brought it right back down to mm-hmm. being a traveling parent, basically, <laughs> which is not glamorous at all. No. <laughs> so like you want to really appreciate like 15 minutes in a green room, wait until someone has to watch your kid in a mm-hmm. hotel room for the whole rest of the night. <laughs> like It gets pretty wild. So, and I don't have any kids or anything. So like, that's a mind blowing experience for me, for him. He's like more used to it. But uh, yeah, I think, when you when you have enough other real life situations going on, <clears throat> it'll kind of remind you how awesome music is. But if you're like a single rich touring DJ, you probably get in your little bubble of it and just that becomes your normal life. Yep. I agree. Yeah. A couple things I wanted to ask you about. One is do you think you just brought up kids? Do you think you have any desire to ever want to have children of your own? No. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely Definitely not. not. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like I have the right to say that with strong convictions because like when I was younger, I was like like a camp, like an overnight camp counselor at like the most stereotypical summer camp ever, where I'd literally be like watching kids twenty four hours a day. I was also a student teacher for a little while. And that all really showed me that like kids are kind of little pains in the ass and you can't hit them. So <laughs> is it, is it, would it be different though, if it was your kid, not somebody else's kid? I mean, I've heard that that's what changes your mind. Yeah. I'd rather <laughs> just take people's word for it though. Like I'm pretty immature as it is. Like, uh, people think I have kids though. Cause they'll come over to my house and there's like, like, it's like literally just like Nerf guns lying around and stuff like that. But like, like no, those, I'm just those a, are mine. I'm just, yeah, I'm just an oversized kid. Yeah, <laughs> basically, it's it's home defense and like you know if my friends are being stupid, then sometimes they got to catch a little catch a dart. So yeah, I wouldn't want kids coming around and like messing up my toys. Basically, I like to keep them because like that's one thing that I noticed uh, from hanging around with Patrick's kid. I don't think this is mean mean to say. Maybe it is. I don't know. Their hands are always sticky 24 hours a day like they just came out of the shower it doesn't even matter they're for some reason their hands are just the consistency of like a jolly rancher at all times <laughs> so if you have anything that you truly care about in life that will be immediately ruined by a child yep yeah I, I've, I've experienced that similar thing yeah i sticky hands and yeah i think that's why baby wipes exist right <laughs> <laughs> so oh, parents can yeah is white run around and wipe their hands all the time watch i'm probably gonna have a kid someday and then I'm, they're gonna like see this clip and be like what the <laughs> fuck dad like <laughs> hey you never know it could uh-huh. happen yeah don't, don't be don't be silly so, and wrap your willy man <laughs> <laughs> so that's the long answer of do i want kids definitely not yeah um well the the reason why i asked you that is because i wanted to ask you a little bit about more about like staying grounded because we were on that topic is you know kids like you said, being around Patrick's kid, it, he definitely taught you to be grounded and took away all the glamorous, you know, part of touring. But other than obviously, since you don't want a kid, what are some things that you do to remain grounded and, re, you know, remind yourself that like, I could have a worse life than being a starving artist? <laughs> I don't know if it like really keeps me grounded, but the way I like kind of balance everything out is I, and this is like a recent thing. Uh, I got really into skateboarding. It's like, I know Patrick's it's like isn't my, Dirt Monkey's into that too, right? We So we both started at the same time. So like a lot of people are like, yeah, that's not a big deal. I've been skateboarding my whole life. That's not weird. But like we started <laughs> late in life, uh, yeah. like literally probably like <laughs> two years ago. And that kind of uh, became our obsession. It was a fun thing to do. Like even now we'll bring boards on the road so that we can go skate in like other towns since we don't get to like hang out as much. So that's like super fun. And something to really look forward to but there's something about like 
when you get to be an adult, I feel like you stop like skinning your knee. And I think that that, I don't know, there's something weird about when you just don't hurt yourself on a regular basis that like gives you a detachment from reality. And I find that from falling on pavement a lot, uh, it really makes me forget about like social media numbers and uh, content creation. That's a good way to add yeah. on a lineup. That yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense because yeah, when you're yeah, when you're in involved with something and you're so like heavily focused, especially if you 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 know I was a skater growing up. I remember you know that would be my escape from the rest of life is going and skateboarding and not worrying about your biggest like you said your biggest problem is. Oh, I skinned my knee, or I, oh, I hopefully nothing crazy like you broke an arm or anything. But it, I could see how that would definitely keep your mind away from. Yeah, yeah, definitely a knock on wood. Uh, keep your mind away from uh, the the hustle and bustle and everything. I think it's important for your mental health to have something like that. Like for me now, it's turned into the gym. I love going to the gym, but something where you just go and take your mind off everything else and do something just for yourself. Yeah, I, I mean, so that was the thing is like we were looking for something to do. Uh, that was physical and we could have gone to the gym, but we decided that skateboarding just looked way sicker. So that was the, that was the route that we took. But yeah, I, I mean, whatever it is, I think it's important to just be terrible at something. Obviously not the main thing that you're doing, but I feel like everyone should choose something on the side to really suck at because it will make the achievements in the other things seem like the, there's more context for it. and it almost like helps with like, like, you know, everything has these crazy learning curves when you're new at something. So like, if you're just like old and established at everything, you start to really like, be like, Oh, this is just how good I am. I'm dope. And it's like, no man, just go do something you suck at. And then you'll remember like how fun it is to like progress and learn things. And sometimes that will like have extra effects on the, the things you do from day to day. Like I definitely find that if I go out and skate like a bunch and like learn a new trick or do something like that I've been trying to do, it like pumps me up. And then I like go hit the studio for like the rest yeah, you of the carry night. That like, energy. Right, yeah, exactly. Cause I'm like, it's that same feeling of like when you like make a new synth or something like that. And you're like, Oh, I didn't even think I could ever do that. And now here I am. And you're like, Oh yeah, that reminds me I have to finish the song. So. And I think it's, yeah, it's good. I think for longevity of anything to, to have a challenge, you know, like it, I felt like life would just get so monotonous and boring if you didn't have something that challenged you. Absolutely. Well, we are getting to time here, but I did want to ask, you know, what's coming up in the future. I know we've talked a bunch about, um, the, you know, the labels that you've released on and the festivals coming up like lost land and stuff like that. But what are some of the things that you're excited about that you can talk about that are coming up for you and kind of what, what are some of your goals for the rest of the year and into next? So right now I'm just trying to finish up. I have like, I'm just doing, I don't know why this is happening, but like I have like four or five collabs with the most talented producers Lit. ever. <laughs> Hell yeah. So I'll shout them out. I got a song with Juve, uh, a song with Jenga, a song with High Zombie, um, and then a, f a few others. So like I'm working on getting all those out so that that can kind of be like taken care of. I uh, got a couple shows coming up. Obviously lost lands next week is the, the biggest thing that I've done to date. So congrats. This will be out actually after lost lands, but congrats. I, I'll be at your set. So, and then, yeah, I just have like a list, <clears throat> uh, every year I make a big list, uh, for October of things that I have to do ranging from, corn mazes to chugging apple cider uh costumes pumpkins so uh Fire. a lot of goals that i have coming up for next big, month big that Halloween all kind of involve. <laughs> yeah yeah i got a lot to do so basically just trying to check all the boxes for that and getting really excited for you know for the main season here sick Hell yeah, sounds fun. I wanted to ask you about uh, the uh, the form that I sent you before we sat down and talked. You answered one of the questions, and uh, you know, don't talk about it if you can't. But you mentioned a summer that you said you could never speak about again. And since, since you brought it up, I just wanted to ask you, what what was that? Because can you let us in on that secret? I mean, I've I've been advised by uh, lawyers and legal counsel that that both of us are never supposed to talk about that ever. Oh again. boy. So we just have to, we just have to keep that buried. But just so you know, I remember. Fuck. 
<laughs> well, it's been awesome talking to you, man. Um, we are getting to time. Dude, so you too. Thank couple, you so uh, much. Absolutely. Um, and I'm excited to see you and you know, catch up at Lost Lands too. But um, last couple of questions, where can listeners keep up to date with all you have going on? Where are your socials? Plug, plug anything you got. Spotify is definitely probably the best, unfortunately, just because I'm really bad at uh, keeping up with SoundCloud because you have to do that yourself. And I often forget that yeah. <laughs> it's even there. But if you do go to my SoundCloud, the reward for going is I might not have my most up-to-date releases on there, but I always have weird stuff that doesn't go up on Spotify. So like mixes and edits and bootlegs and stuff like that. So it's a, a trade-off. Um, but yeah, that you can go to Instagram. That's where you can watch me fall on my skateboard and also play shows. So it's a really good mix because I know that a lot of people's content is pretty much music heavy. So yeah, I'd like show, to yeah. lighten it up. Yeah, so you get to see the the ups and literal downs of Shank Air life. F- falling on your ass off a skateboard. <laughs> Sick. All right, final question. I ask this at the end of every single interview to every guest we have. If and it's if you had one piece of advice that you could give yourself when you first started your journey and picked up your first DAW and you know con- convinced yourself that you wanted to be a music producer, what would that be? One piece of advice. Let's see. Um, I would say probably don't don't show anyone or try to release your music for the first two years. Yep. <laughs> that, that's advice that we kind of talked about earlier, but I didn't follow it. And uh, so I have a lot of wish you cringy would've. stuff online. And I wish I would have just like waited. And then you would have come to my page and been like, oh, he was awesome this whole time. But now <laughs> you know I wasn't. Yeah, just yeah. like everybody else. But transparency, so. man. I, I fuck with the transparency. So I appreciate you being on the so, show. You said that you've asked that question to every single person. What was yes. the best? What was the best answer you've gotten so far? Man, uh, it's been like interesting because like a lot of people answer it based, which I want, they based off like what they specifically learned. Um, a lot of stuff is like like the last interview we did with Nimda. Um, I think he he said, "Oh, I wish I would have like used LFO fast or earlier or like different random small shit like that." Is usually what I get. I'm trying to think. We've done over 100 episodes now, and I've asked that question probably 85 times, so I'm trying to think back. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's usually just like either something we talked about. You you answered it pretty accurately to what most people, other people answer it. So <laughs> Fair. I'm just wondering yeah. if there was like one thing where you're like, if you use three OTTs in one chain, like there's like one specific like actual perfect thing. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's the key. <laughs> that's the key that's the kicker no i'm still waiting for the answer so <laughs> future guests listen so up no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now is your opportunity no i'm just kidding but uh yeah thank you so much for coming on the show today it was really nice talking with you and hopefully i get to hang out with you at, at lost lands again this will be out, out after lost lands but hopefully i got to hang out with you so dope dude thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it absolutely have a good rest of your day cheers